On recebe notícias cá ver Como ouvi dizer que os camaradas Já flipa na vontade de pôr Passem as maçãs com jardas Tony and I are here in Wesley, California, in the heart of tomato country. We're gonna go out, huh? Picking tomatoes. We're gonna be picking tomatoes with that guy right there. Steve, how you doing? Steve's our tomato expert. <laughs> how you doing, Tony? Good. What's going on? Good to see you. Peter. Great to see you. Looking Good forward to, see you. to this. Great. All right. Want to go out to the field? Uh, yeah. Lead the All way. Right. Let's go. All right. So what he was telling me earlier is that um, two weeks before their harvest. The water is cut off to these fields, and they really know when the fields are ready to be harvested, when all the leaves turn brown, and all the protection that the leaves are giving to the tomatoes goes away, and the tomatoes really ripen and sweeten on the vine, and then they can be shaken off the tree. At, th at this stage, because it's all still green, they wouldn't actually be harvested for real. The kind of tomatoes you have at home are what's called an inter indeterminate variety, which means that the tomatoes will ripen over a season and maybe an entire summer long. Every week you go out and pick some nice fresh ones. Mm -hmm. We need these to all be ready to harvest at the same time because we're going to grab the entire bush, take it into the harvester. Uh, let me see if I can find the stem here. And the harvester will okay. actually shake the tomatoes and they'll off. Shake them and, and kind of gather them. They'll all be collected underneath. Correct. And you know, in, in about two weeks, this will have gotten to a point where the, vo the vine will release all the tomatoes and all the tomatoes. You know, probably 95% of the tomatoes will be super red and ripe mm -hmm. at that time. And that way, we can't come back a second time because we're taking the whole bush all at once. Uh, the way you process tomatoes is different from some companies where that just cook it all down and make a paste. You're actually putting a product in the can that's the next step for this product is going to be a place like Tony's where he's going to turn Absolutely. it into a sauce of some sort. It's one step from the vine into the can and that's it. And so what does that mean for you at, at your end? You're, you're receiving a product like that. And, and how, did you, how did you come to the, de the decision to go with that kind of a product? You know, originally uh, 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, my brother and I opened. We, we started with Stanislaus. Um, and it was really because of the product, how, how good it, it tasted. I, you know, and then until I got into the business further and further, I realized why it was that great. Um, it was because how they harvested. So first, you, 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 you experienced it as a flavor, and then you found out how they got that flavor. Yeah, and then when I, you know, came yeah. out here, you know, when I grew up on a farm, you know, with my grandpa, mm -hmm. understanding how a farmer, how farmers look at things and how they work and how they can, um, you know, I kind of got the idea why I love this product so much. It just it was pretty much reminded me of my grandpa, who was a farmer. So, I mean, it's one thing to have a, a restaurant and the cans come in and you use the cans, you can make a good product, but to actually be disconnected to where you're, you're an hour from where the tomatoes are growing. Yeah, literally an hour, hour and a half, and I can just come out here and, and you know, just give them a call ahead of time. We'll meet at the plant and, and, and check it out. It's just, it's just great. I think it's great just being able to use locally grown products uh, in your restaurant. I mean, I think that's what California is really about. And even the products I, I'm getting in a can, I can it's, it's still local, really. Yeah. What you're experiencing when you, when you taste it is some kind of burst of freshness that you didn't get from somewhere else. And consistency as well, you know, and, I mean, always bring it back. From batch to batch, yeah. If yeah. you look under obsessive compulsive tomato yeah. in the dictionary, it has our picture. <laughs> well, yeah. for somebody who's, who's tasting tomato products, what should we be looking if, for? If, you're, if you're tasting a, uh, a tomato, you should have a burst of clean, fresh flavor. You should be able to sense almost a kind of a viney aroma to it. It should be very pleasing to the palate. Um, shouldn't have any off aromas uh, or textures, anything like that. You want it to be um, buttery mouth feel. So it's uh, it's very much, a, it's, we look at it like tasting wine. We really do. So what is it that you in particular are looking for when you taste it? Uh, what hap what's happening inside of your head? It really depends on the style of pizza you're doing is kind of the route of the type mm. of tomato or the type of tomato product I want to use on the pizza. You know how good you are at some of these things, but what is it? what's it like when Someone outside says, hey, you know, you're the guy. You know, the, when, when people in Italy come up to you and go, we heard about you. Yeah. you know, it's pretty nice like, to get that respect, you know, because yeah. I always respect all my other 
all my friends, all my comrades, you know, all my, uh, all the other pizza makers I always respect. So it's nice to get that respect in return. I think that's very important. And that's something that's, you know, come up again and again in our conversation is this notion of respect, respect the craft, respect the craftsman. So, so respect seems like it's a, it's a theme. It's a driving theme for you. I think you lose that. Maybe? Yeah, I think you lose that. I think that, you know, I always respect my parents, my grandpa. Uh, he was a farmer. You know, some people may not look at farmers as being much respectful mm -hmm. to them. I thought he was the hardest working man I ever knew. Um, so I think that respect that this kind of you lose that I think you're kind of seeing that a little bit lost in the in the world I think uh, yeah. it's important to remember that respect. Do you feel like your grandpa would be really proud of you right now? Yeah, oh yeah, he would totally yeah. be and proud that's of important. Me. I think. Yeah, it's very yeah. important to me What we talk about a lot or what Dino the owner talks about a lot is immigrant values and uh, his dad came over from Luca in the early 20s and taught him that the most valuable thing you have in your life is your reputation and uh, the way that you build a reputation is you always tell the truth, your word is your bond, and you work really hard to be the best at what you can be. And so um, that's kind of been built into the DNA of our company. And so from the top to the bottom, we're always looking for ways to improve the product and also ways to get to know our customers better. Um, because, you know, in the race for quality, this is a, something we say, a race for quality, there is no finish line. So it makes us feel good to be the best and always be trying to reach a little bit farther. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the great tomatoes, the great ingredients. Mm -hmm.